What is up, my people? Welcome back to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel where you get to watch me race bikes and then talk about it. How awesome. Today we are at the Mass Ave Crit up in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is an ACC race. I've done this race multiple times in previous years on the Texas Roadhouse team. That guy right there has never raced cyclocross, obviously, missing the pedal right off the line, going from that front row call up to the back of the pack. This course is pretty neat. Uh, typically it's been a triangle, but this year they added in a couple extra turns. And so you've got just a bunch of turns on the back stretch and then one long straight away to the finish line. And uh, it was definitely a fun course. That first turn was really the most exciting part of the course where it was um, more, almost more than a 90 degree uh, turn and you could go bombing into it really fast. And so that turn was definitely the biggest the biggest turn in the race. You can see over here an FIB guy clips his pedal. We're only in the first lap and you've already seen this guy miss miss his pedal. You've seen this guy clip his pedal. It's uh we're off to a pretty fast start here. Um some excitement already going down in the first 1 minute of the race. I didn't get a great start position, um, kind of just mid pack closer to the back. And so you can see that I'm definitely like getting just swarmed through these turns. I am wanting to take these turns a little bit faster, but as you could have just saw, uh, it's bunching up really bad in those turns. And so I'm like coming into those turns with momentum and just kind of like ramming into the back of the people in front of me because I really don't want to grab the brakes like right here. Um, I want to carry as much speed as possible through that turn, but uh, traffic has a different uh, different opinion and, and is wanting me to, to not, uh, not carry that speed. But I did start to figure out that if I could drop in on the inside of that turn, I could take that turn a little uh, more on the inside than what other people were because those cones were there. And so you could really take the inside because you don't have to worry about your bars hitting the metal post or anything like that. And so you could really rip that inside of that turn. And so for a lot of the, for a lot of the laps, that's what I was doing. I was just kind of bouncing on the inside. So you can see I'm passing people on the left-hand side down this long straightaway so that when we do get to that first turn, I'm already set up to take the turn on the inside. former roadhouse teammate of mine fergus arthur he also started at the back with me he's gonna come around me oh we got a guy on the ground that's not good we got a mito q guy i don't know what happened he was there by himself just on the ground i wonder if he had just clipped those barriers uh, we got another guy trey shepherd my homeboy trey shepherd at the bike shop bicycle station clipping his pedal through that first turn um, so already like you can see that the speeds are high and when the speeds are high people want to try and pedal through those turns and so that's why you're seeing these people clip their pedals through these turns because it's deceiving you don't realize how fast you're going and you think oh i can start pedaling um and so it's a couple laps in i've finally made it up to the front of the race this mito q guy is upset about something i guess i'm assuming that was the guy that was on the ground and he is trying to fight the guy who crashed him the lap before i don't know but i'm at the front and apparently there's already a guy off the front and he's like way off the front. And who other than Josh Burnett from the Mito Q team? Oh, we got an apex guy <laughs> overshooting that turn and almost hitting the barriers. Uh, luckily I was able to slide past him and I've got to close this little bit of a gap. But yeah, Mito Q has already sent Josh Burnett up the road. I didn't even, I didn't even see it happen. I'm just hearing about it uh, over the PA and they're saying like, he's got 15 seconds already. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, does anybody know who this guy is? This is the same guy that's already soloed away from two races that he's done. Uh, and he won the BWR race a few weeks ago. Like, we're just going to sit back and watch him solo this race too. Um, 
So that's kind of frustrating. So I go to the front. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, who's not, who isn't feeling good eight minutes into the beginning of the race. And so, uh, since I'm feeling good and I'm at the front, I'm like, well, might as well mix it up. Maybe try to get into some kind of chase group or something. Um, better to get into that group early on and to just be there than to just get like washing machine into the middle of the Peloton. But at least that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you can see I'm setting up for that turn one on the outside and I really didn't like it over here. You get pinched really hard into the fence uh, because people are starting to swing out wide and so I had to really grab a bunch of brake there and didn't like how close we got to those barriers and I lost a lot of speed going through that turn one. So I, I, I've kind of made a note to myself like, okay, don't end up on the right side of the road going into that turn one. We've got Danny Summerhill here in the green jersey. I think that's the ACC, either points or overall leader's jersey. And he's just a, an overall strong man. And so if I can get into a break with Danny Summerhill, man, now we're in business. Like, dude can handle his bike. Dude can pedal really hard. And he'll work with you. Uh, and he knows he can beat me at the end of the race. And so, like, you get into a break with that guy and you're in, you're in a good spot. So I'm thinking... Maybe if I go, he'll come with me. So I kind of give it a go um, to try to create a little bit of a gap or some separation. But it's pretty short-lived because the MitoQ guys have me marked. Of course, doing their teammate job, somebody counters. I'm still going to try to stay close to the front so that if something does get some separation, I can try and go with it. You can see by how bunched up it gets through that turn that the pace is not very high, which is really, really good for Josh Burnett. His gap goes all the way out to 30 seconds, which, I mean, this was a really short lap. I think it was like a minute and a half lap that we were doing. And so, like, he, he got close to, like, halfway around the lap on us. Um, and I wouldn't put it past this guy to lap the field solo. So, yeah, I get pinched real hard on the inside through there. I was following that rainstorm guy, and he was able to squeeze through, but I wasn't, and so I kind of had to grab some break there. But uh, it was kind of an interesting race. The ACC races are usually, like, well-attended, and big teams are there, but really the rainstorm was the only big team that was here. Mido Q had almost a full roster, I think, um, but they just weren't, they didn't have, they had Josh Burnett and maybe one or two other strong guys, but they didn't have the depth that Rainstorm had. And so once, and plus once they had their guy off of the front, uh, it just seemed like the group kind of sat up and we're like, all right, well, I guess, I guess we're just going to sit back and let this guy do his thing off the front. Rainstorm does go to the front and get pretty organized. They end up getting their entire five or six man squad on the front and so they pretty much do the old school legion thing where they they just go hard for the whole race in order to bring this guy back um because it is a 30 second gap and it's a pretty big ask to bring him back and so there i think at this point on the front just kind of working to bring back this breakaway and they're realizing like it's going to be a while before we bring him back because he's strong and we've already given him 30 seconds so They've got their work cut out for them, and I think the rest of the group was content to just let them sit on the front and pull him back. Yeah, not not a good move, I don't think, um, by the, the guy in the all-black kit that just kind of swung across 
it was awesome for him. Um, he went from the right side to the left side. You see him dive bombing on the inside of that turn as well. I wasn't very impressed with how he was racing. Um, I just thought he was maybe taking a, f a few more risks than needed to, especially since we're sitting mid pack. Um, like I get it if you're at the front, I get it if you're fighting for position for some kind of sprint, but like there's no need to dive bomb the inside of these turns when you're just chilling in the middle of the group. Um, same thing right here, there he is again. Uh, also the guy in the green kit does the same thing, like just a bad, bad call. Um, that's when crashes happen, that's when uh, people bump into each other like can't you just be content with hopping on the wheel and sliding through that turn um, just in the group I don't know I do end up behind him and I end up racing behind him for like the rest of the race um, I was pretty content on just sitting in I wasn't you know I wasn't gonna go to the front and try to overtake the rainstorm train um, but because I did get a little bit complacent or content in the group, I do, anytime you get complacent in a crit, you go backwards. And that's exactly what happened. So now I'm sitting pretty far back, um, but I also am just not feeling super motivated to move up. I'm like, well, it is what it is. Maybe we'll bring back this solo rider if Rainstorm brings him back. And then maybe I'll try to surge to the front in the last 10 laps. But as of right now, uh, it doesn't look like a breakaway is going. Rainstorm has it on lockdown. So um, I'm just sitting in kind of waiting to the end of the race. I don't feel good. I don't feel terrible either though. So I'm kind of just sitting in like I feel, yeah, I feel pretty good, but I don't feel terrible. So, but I also just don't want to risk it. Like I'm not, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not a crit racer anymore. And so I don't need to put my skin on the line to try and win or even just get top 10 in a crit which like winning this race is basically oh let's watch that again so my homeboy number one on his back um i don't know if he just lost focus for a second but he, it looks like he starts turning a little late and then hit both of his tires just slot out which makes me wonder if maybe he was riding too high of pressure um if you're running a really high pressure, the, the the tires aren't subtle, and so they can't give a little bit in the turn and really like uh, grip grip the turn. And so I think like as soon as he tried to turn a little sharper than what his bike could handle, those really hard pumped up tires just started to slide across the asphalt. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know for sure because it didn't look like he did anything abnormal to cause that crash so i'm gonna say maybe he needs to lower his pressure um but you know that's just a that's just a wild guess so we're within 10 to go um i'm thinking maybe i'll try to move up a little bit um and the way you do that is trying to pick off a couple handful you know a couple handfuls of riders every lap you don't just try to sprint to the front so it's a slow process of moving up a couple spots here and there um, so I've started to try and do that. I'm close enough to the front now where I can see most of the Rainstorm team, I can see Clever Martinez, who was in the blue kit. Um, I can see this Mito Q, James Gardner, who is like a massive, massive guy, but he's only 19 years old. So like wrap your head around that is, yeah, just unbelievable. And he said he watches my YouTube channel, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Anyways, um, yeah, so I got up there. Oh, who's that? How did he, what, where did he come from? He's already crashed. Now he's back up again, and he's already back in front of me. Um, yeah, that's great. Don't you just love that? Uh, the, the beauty of the free lap in crit racing. You can crash and get right back in, and yeah, he's ahead of me. I think, I, you know, I did get pretty close to the front, but you could see that it, had, it, was, it was bunching up a lot, um, which, like I said, or was saying, I really just was not wanting to risk crashing uh, to get maybe a top 10. Um, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not a crit racer and I'm not here to 
try and get a result. I'm here to have fun and to train um, and to hang out with people like friends of mine that live up in Indianapolis. So that's where I was. And um, yeah, at this point, you know, like I think we're three or four laps to go. And if you're not, if you're not like locked in thinking I'm going to get a result at this point in the race with two to go and you're committed to going all in to fight for position and to move up, then it's it's way too late. I mean, you have to like have have made that up in your mind with probably five laps to go and you have to commit to, all right, I'm not sitting up, I'm pushing, I'm fighting for, for position, I'm going to try to stay in the top 10 for the rest of the race and pick off as many people as I can. And in this race, it would have been like, try to ride that rainstorm racing, lead out train for as long as possible and maybe come around one or two of those guys at the finish. Um, but I, you know, like I wasn't committed to that. And there are those, there, there, there's the, the rainstorm lead out guys finishing. Um, and I just wasn't, yeah, I wasn't here to, 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 to risk the rest of my gravel season because of a maybe a top 10 in a crit race um when what like a 20 dollars gift card or something so yep that's the mass ave crit it was fun it was good training and the day after this was indie crit so you'll see a video on that one as well coming out as far as what's coming up next for me i've got the dust bowl 100 next weekend and i am going there to win i was the original winner the first year that they hit it and uh, I'm going back for redemption. I want to win that race and claim my spot as a Dust Bowl champion. But I guess we'll see how that plays out next weekend. Do want to give a quick shout out to the Black Bibs. I'm stoked that uh, they are supporting me this year. The Black Bibs Starlight Apparel. They've really knocked it out of the park with my kit design. It stands out. I would argue more than any other kit in the Gravel Peloton. So thank you, Starlight, for giving me. Um, yeah, thanks for ordering red bibs for me because that's a pretty bold ask and they told me not to and I said, I think I want to and it, I think it turned out pretty good. It's gotten, um, they look good. So you can head over to the Black Bibs and find uh, really good bibs at affordable pricing. Check it out. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.